This is our 1967 Pontiac Firebird that we're working on unconventionally rebuilding. We're putting a 2 liter GM Ecotec LTG engine into the 67 Firebird. Now we're going to take a break from assembly and get this thing to actually stop. I don't know if that makes any sense. Anyways, this episode is about brakes. So take a break for yourself and join us as we get this car to come to a stop. Well, look at what I have here. Can you believe this core support is actually the same one that the car had? I didn't do anything to it, except I just threw it in the sand blaster, gave it a quick blast, and then just painted it with a little bit of epoxy gray and some Rust-Oleum from Home Depot. The paint didn't even cost $30. Can you believe that? We also installed a new set of polyurethane bushings for the subframe and the core support. So this front end is now sitting proper. Gonna tap the bolt holes for the stainless hardware. Otherwise, you're not gonna have a good time. There's so much room in the engine bay now. I know. It's so easy. It's just, mm -hmm. look at all this room for everything. Radiator, fan, whatever. Amazing. Electric AC compressor, hmm. turbocharger, mm -hmm. tubing, ductwork. Lots of room for activities here. There's a box with my name on it. Let's see what's in here. I like this shifter boot. That looks nice. For the interior, we've chosen a low car leather shift boot with a mounting ring. The shift knob is gonna be this returned bowler shift knob hmm. with this cool hole pattern in it. That looks neat. I like it. I just have to drill and tap the shift stock to that uh, 3 8 by 16 thread pitch. I like it. This looks great. Parts of this stuff is all brake fittings and master cylinders and whatnot. So we've got a nice DSE bracket here for our clutch master cylinder. Really made in USA, huh? I think it's a full kit. I think I had to buy this block separately or something. What's that made out of? This is a super nice aluminum adapter block with threaded and tapped holes for adapting a master cylinder onto your firewall. So that it gets at the right angle. Looks like we've got a hardware package. Oh, I thought it didn't come with this stuff and you had to buy everything separately. I guess not. That's all you get. Mm -hmm. You get a little instruction manual in a plastic bag. Yeah. So that was uh, $150 right there. Was it actually? That's pretty cool, yep. Hmm. Now begins the fun. We have to find the parts we need. Yeah, we have so many boxes, it's hard to say. Oh, I found it. Well, that was easy. That was easy. Now, what do we have here? Ah, the firewall bracket instruction manual. And yes, it needs paint. They're not going to powder coat it for a hundred dollars. No, they give it to you. Why is it? What? Like that? It's classic poly right here. See, look, there's a picture of it right there. Yeah, so there you go. It's supposed to kick out from the firewall. It's backwards. They put the brake in at the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. Well, so it's a good thing we have this reference car right here. The bracket that was included in that DSE kit, of course, made backwards. Yeah, see that's supposed to kick out from the firewall just like that. Not the right bolts, not the right part, actually the right part, not the right contents of the part box. Yep. And we have struck it out again. Seriously. We literally bought the bolts. What? What did they sell us? We had to special order these bolts and it's the wrong thing. It's turning out to be an interesting afternoon over here. <laughs> Hmm. 
Yeah, no, these are just the wrong bolts. The, the blah is cast for a different bolt. This is just like one size up from what it's supposed to be. Well, it's a good thing we have this metric section here in the old nuts and bolts bin. Well, that looks like a perfect match if I do say so myself. Why would it? I concur. Just needs a washer and we'll be set. Yeah, washer per bolt. Weird, the washer's a little loosey-goosey on there, but... No, yeah, it does fit. <sighs> Let's call it a day. No, just kidding. <laughs> so now that we have the engine installed, we're going to move right on to the brake system. This is a little creative. I like what's in this box. I haven't done this before. I've done the Willwood, you can get the three pedal setup. <clears throat> That's a little different. This is close to that because it uses the factory brake system, but it also has a balance bar system that mounts onto the firewall. So here we've got this really cool cast custom made piece by Willwood in Arizona. Now explain, this would basically be the replacement for a uh, proportioning valve so that you don't have exactly. to proportion your brakes via a hydraulic valve. Correct, this, is, this would be a direct replacement for a proportioning valve. And what's also cool is there's this knob that you can install here on the side of it to adjust your bias, or you can have a remote adjustment if you want to have a cable inside of your car that you can also adjust the bias on the dash. It's a little miniature master. Isn't that here. cool? That's perfect. So for the OEM look, we've elected to use the integral reservoir master cylinder. This has one output per master cylinder, so this is an eighth inch out. So we'll go ahead and plumb this up to three sixteenths AN fittings, so dash 3 AN to do all our brake lines with tube nuts and such. Um, so 7 eighths for the rear, which is using Willwood 4 piston Dynalite calipers. And then for the front, we're running the largest master size they offer in this configuration, which is a 15 16 And that's for the uh, Z06 caliper, the PBR calipers in the front of the car. 15 16? Where, where'd that come from? Six piston caliper with a drilled 14 inch rotor. Do a little test fit here. Bracket fits perfect. No, oh, three seam sealers in the way. I have to pick that off. Unfortunately, uh, we are missing the Detroit Speed bracket because uh, they sent us the wrong bracket in the right box. Somebody wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Great, Scott, we found all the nuts and bolts we ever will need. You know what you say to the car now? It's got the perfect position, Pete. <laughs> Next, Aaron installs the master cylinders for a quick test fit. Try and get some perfect pronunciated audio in this perfect microphone setup that Aaron has installed. Wood sticker, we have like 500,000. And one. Look, here's even more. Oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> this is special sealant for hydraulic fittings. There. This is an eighth inch NPT output here. Master cylinder. Don't let this stuff get on your fingers. Bottom of the can for the good stuff. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uniform statistical probability distribution. Beautiful. Uh, anyway, so what do we have here? See if this is the right part. The way this day's been going. Amazon Ooh, wow. radiator. Whoa. Holy cow. I don't think I've ever seen one of these with fans. They really up their game here. Well, I bought it with fans. This was like the high end one from Amazon. I know, it was now, like $200. The question is, does it have the things welded onto it to actually mount this thing in the car or is it a piece of junk? I like the cap, danger. CNC machine cap, but they tell you that it's CNC machine. Really? Wow. Does, Does it, it actually come with hardware? 
seriously? Oh my god. There is an envelope down there. Whoa. Things in it. Comes Whoa. with a relay. Whoa. The cardboard has hit the floor. This is amazing. What is it? Did it actually come with a did it come with a temperature sender? What is that? In my sights to see. No way. No That's way. amazing. Now, is that meant to go in the radiator, or what's the idea there? I don't know. There's no instructions. No. Okay, well, it's a relay that we can use for the fan and a temperature switch. controller. Switch ground. Switch I mean, ground is how they're doing it. Is there a potential we could just actually use this and not have to bother wiring up the ECU-controlled fans and all that stuff? Yeah, that would be easy. Is a port, like, right here by chance? Oh, that's for an automatic transmission. Huh. Well, I wonder what the thought there was. Slide it right on in here. And then it doesn't fit. What? So it's going to be this hole here. I'm going to kind of open it up that way. Yeah, yeah. Give it a wiggle. We're doing this 60 style. Hey! Well, that was the easiest hole slotting I've ever done. Oh, hi there. <laughs> there we go. All right, uh, try two of the radiator. Oh, wait a minute. We gotta take out that bolt. Oh yeah. Close to the battery tray. This is a cool tool. If you don't have one of these, you are sorely missing out. Astro Tools 9409A. So this just kind of goes where it can. I'm gonna kind of maneuver around the turbocharger on this car. Fits under those factory break your hands off hose clamps. And then it just ratchets on. Then even better, it locks on. And then you just simply whoop. There you go. Remove those pesky hose clamps. And to release, you just squeeze the handle, pull the blue trigger, and it gently releases. Tension. Now mind you, this is an excellent style hose clamp, so we are gonna reuse this. So check this out. I think we could use this. It says it's for a 16 to 19 Camaro. Look at this, the dimensions. This is on eBay Motors, of course, but uh, looks like the dimensions here are super similar. I say it's cheap enough. Add to cart. I mean, just an air filter is like 50 bucks usually. Boop, 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 boop. The loading game. Ah. Easy peasy. Now that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you have to admit, for the legitimacy of a brake system, Good as it gets. It's as good as it gets. It really is as good as it gets. <laughs> and this is going to live right down here. It'll live down there on the frame rail so that the brake hose can connect to it. Sweet. Just need a self-tapper for that. Perfect. That is how you make a beautiful AN fitting. The last step to the brake system is these Wilwood flex lines. These are really nice because they're 3 AN on both sides of them, but as per Wilwood, they're made in the USA in Arizona. So um, they're about as high quality as you can get. 
Aaron's gonna go slide on under the Firebird. Maybe tomorrow we should mount tires and wheels. Ooh, that'd be fun. I'd like to get those bolted on the back so it looks complete. Going down under. Yeah, these fit like a glove. Oh, I bet. That's such a nice pretty flying. This is such a cool setup. These heavy duty CV shafts, the Willwood calipers, with inboard brakes, less unsprung weight, right? Mm -hmm. We got our sort of forged wheels all painted up in our custom finish. All right, this is gonna be a real weird intro to this video. Okay, anyway, so unboxing this. Let's see if some the racing second order. time this shot, let's see if Detroit Speed can mess up twice in a row. Ooh, yeah, that's a good point. But if they did mess up, can't track the car without the clutch. Okay, yeah. Save that for later. Okay, so it looks like the same part. Did they open it and double check that it was correct? Kind of looks like it. it's yeah. been retaped at some point. Hmm. Somebody has done a QC on this. Hmm. Or somebody's returned it. Hmm. This is a hot lot. It's going once. Hi, hey, bit incorrectly. <laughs> Neat. Yeah, look at yeah. See the picture? How it's shaded. Your part numbers and don't need sales assistance. Press one. For assistance with an order you have already placed or received, press two. I've got a master cylinder bracket that's already been replaced once because it was the incorrect part in the box. Okay. And uh. it's the same one you've always ordered? or? Yeah, it's the yeah, exact same part number we've always ordered, but I don't know if maybe they have a bad manufacturing batch or something. Because um, we've gotten two in a row that are wrong, so. Yeah. All right, I will go ahead and get another one of these sent out to you. And well, I appreciate your help, and uh, hopefully that's just a fluke in the system, and they don't have a big, huge lot of these they've made that are wrong. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're, I hope that's the case. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a long couple days. And, oh, gosh. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, fingers crossed, anyways. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> hope it works out. Yeah, well, hey, have a good fourth weekend to you, and uh, thanks for your help. You too. No problem. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I, there we go. I guess uh, we need to dispose of this properly. So I think the next step here is cutting this in half. <laughs> so I'm just going to flip it around and weld it up on the old TIG bench. I mean, that's... I want this done today, not in another week. Yeah, exactly. We've already been waiting, what, three or four days just for this bracket again. We bought the thing a month ago. It's dumb. This place, I tell you what, you can't make this up. <laughs> Well, now I cut a couple of relief cuts, hammer it back. There you go, that's the angle of the one on the firewall, so we'll just copy that onto the other. Right on the money. Cool. I'll just weld it up. Well, Aaron, the tubing master's over here going crazy making brake lines. This is so much fun. I don't know why I enjoy this so much. I'm just weird. What can I say? <laughs> I can't make a brake line at all, and then Aaron makes these. It's like, what? Just kidding, I can't build brake lines. Just not this good. Oh no, you found my dirty little secret here. The trick here is I've got a quarter piece of two and a quarter inch exhaust tubing here. You just clamp it in the vise there. It's a great little surface to work on. You just kind of wrap this around the tube. And that's how that's done. So this is gonna come out like that. Beautiful. Yeah, that looks good, but I need to straighten this out a little bit more here. Give it a bend, like so. There we 
then I'll nice. take, take this out here. I'll give it a finishing bit to this. Strapping it around the tube. There we go. Finished product. This old patina bird has better brake lines than Aaron's Firebird. Mine's pretty good, though. Yeah, yours is pretty good, but this is even like on another level, almost. They look even better now that it's been drying for a while. Maybe they're fully cured. Let's mount them. Let's mount them up. Made in China. Yeah. Well, uh, let's go carry them inside and put them on the tire machine and mount them up. Nice job, sir. It's my it's my finest work. <laughs> Who's your fine? <laughs> the satin barrel and this satin clear and ooh, it just it looks like powder coating, but it's not. It's crazy. It's you would barren paint. You would never know. With the mismanufactured clutch master cylinder bracket now re-welded and fixed, I was able to finally start assembling the clutch system. Here I'm bolting the master cylinder onto the bracket and installing the AN fitting at the end of the master cylinder where the pressure line to the hydraulic slave cylinder will be attached to. First I bolt the Detroit speed bracket onto the firewall and then I'm able to install the Willwood pedal set assembly. From there I can reinstall the brake and clutch pedals. Since this car was a factory automatic we've had to convert it to a manual clutch pedal which is just a piece of cake. Pretty much you just take out the brake pedal from the automatic car and put in the clutch one, uh, the carrier in the dash is the same. This does require an additional hole to be drilled in the clutch pedal. So that's what I'm doing here to get the right pedal ratio for the stroke of the master cylinder. Uh, this is required. And a quick session with the drill bit uh, makes that correct hole to get the optimal six to one pedal ratio with the Detroit speed bracket assembly. Super trick setup, and that's what that billet block is really good at, is just correcting the geometry so the master cylinder is mounted in the correct position so there's no stroke issues with the clutch master cylinder. Once I had all that mounted onto the firewall, it was time to actually put some juice in the brakes and start the bleed. Since I'm using dash three, a and fittings on all the brake lines. I can kind of cheat a little bit and I've made a bleeder assembly complete with tube nut to go off of the fitting that I've installed into the master cylinders. Pretty much what I did is just took an extra piece of stainless steel brake line, uh, bent a 90 in it, and then just made it where I could slip 3 16 brake hose or rubber hose of some sort, vacuum hose, over that just to uh, have a leak free connection back into the master cylinder reservoir. And from there, I'm able to stroke the bore just ever so slightly, maybe like one inch of total travel, um, just enough to move the fluid back and forth as necessary to kind of burp out all the air out of the master cylinder. You'll know that the process is complete uh, once there is no more air coming out of the hose that goes into the reservoir. And once that's done, you can pretty much just take the master cylinder back to the car, carefully install it back onto the firewall and being extra careful not to drip any of the instant paint ruining fluid that comes out of the master cylinders onto anything. Um, and then I just pretty much take a microfiber towel underneath the whole thing back off the tube nut, quickly switch the line with the bleeder line and the one that's installed in the car, I reconnect everything, and then begin the process of double checking that there is no brake fitting leaks anywhere underneath the car. Uh, not really that complicated, but there's a lot of little steps that if you do one of them wrong, then the whole thing won't work. So definitely pays to take the time to do it right. And that's what we've done here, especially with the three AN fittings. I really prefer doing AN lines whenever possible. It's just a surefire way to ensure that there are no pesky leaks due to bad flares or crooked installed lines. Once everything's reinstalled, it's actually time to do some vacuum bleeding. And this is pretty much just a one man setup. This is the best way to do brake lines. As far as I'm concerned, when you don't have an ABS module or something in line where you have to pulse the system. But at the end of the day, it all worked out super well and the brake system is complete. Check out how good these look in the sun. Now well, they need a little tire shine. But... <laughs> Gotta admit, it looks pretty good. Yeah, let's roll them up and mount them on the car. Good hmm. job right there. No kidding. There you go. Beautiful. But that is beautiful. Mm 
Gosh, that fits really good. Got full of boxes in here. Hey, look, it's a cardboard crusher. Man, with the, with the tires on it, it almost looks like more proper. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it like fits to the quarter panels absolutely absolutely flawless. The fact that these fit out of the box just this good is pretty nuts, honestly, it's, considering this is completely custom suspension on this thing. Yeah, absolutely nuts. The lock and lube. The lock and lube. Tight fit. There you go, and locks in there. Make sure to over pump your boots so it blows out. Seems good to me. What about this uh, tie rod end here? We wouldn't be able to grease that. Oh, that's a good call, good call, good call. We'll put that back on though for safekeeping. No, oh, yeah, not a bad idea. Should we inspect what's happening in here? Oh yeah, I can see some. Oh yeah, we're good. <laughs> oh, this looks so good. Even in the video, it looks good. These are really long wheel studs in the front of this thing. Um, they're ARP studs, so I'm using open-ended lug nuts. Kind of cool, gives it that racing look, and then also allows the wheel studs to stay long, which uh, I like the look of them, but it's like a three-inch wheel stud or something. Happy 4th of July! <laughs> it's 4th of July weekend, and we're bolting together our Made in the United States Firebird. Gorilla Fireworks and you, gonna light up the sky. Oh my god, guys, it's gonna do that thing. <laughs> 